Our next guest also <laughs> believes interest rates can go a lot higher. Jim Bianco runs Bianco Research. He joins us here on set. Welcome to New York, Jim. Thanks for having Good me. Good to have you with us. You th do you think we see 13%? You know, I don't know about 13 percent, but the larger issue that Rick was saying, we're in a secular bear market. It started in August of 2020. There's several more years to go. Now, you can have a year or two rally within the, in the middle of a secular bear market in bonds. I'm in that camp. I still think that maybe seven years from today, we're at at least four and a half or five percent where we are right now. So there's no real drop in rates and there'll probably be higher rates from there. 13 percent. Uh, that would take uh, something bad to happen a lot worse than I anticipate. But I don't, ex I don't think we're near the end of this move in the bond market. Okay, so in the immediate term, uh, mm -hmm. how high can we go at, before we settle into that 4.5% range or so, that, which sounds like you're, you're saying will be the new normal for the 10-year yield? Yeah, because I think 4.5% is kind of like fair value, and we're just a little bit above fair value right now. I, I think what you've seen in the bond market is a capitulation, a good old fashioned, I'd like to say Old Testament capitulation right now, where basically most of the year bond investors, bond managers have been long, been trying to argue why we're going to have a recession, why there's going to be a rally, and have been getting their brains beat in, and they can't take it anymore. And I think what really kicked this one off was September 20th, the Fed meeting. What would help a bond rally, if you want the bonds to rally, Fed come out hawkish. They're going to raise rates a lot more. They're going to be more vigilant about inflation. If they're done and the market senses that there's still some inflation left, they don't want to touch bonds. And that's what I think has been killing the bond market. So the more the Fed talks about being done, waiting, assessing all the rate hikes they've done, the more I think that they're making it worse. And you could possibly see an overshoot through five in the next couple of weeks. But then I think we can, might set up a, you know, a high that could last for a little bit of time and a counter trend rally. Do you think that the Fed is watching the volatility in the bond market and do you think the Fed cares? I don't think they care yet because, yes, they're, of course they're watching the volatility in the bond market, but they're asking the question, is it <clears throat> retarding the economy? Now, they're getting it from a lot of home builders. Jay Powell got it yesterday from some small business owners about inflation. So they're hearing it from that end, but not necessarily enough that they're probably considering changing policy. Jim, how about energy prices? I, I saw in your notes that you think this is playing into it. It's a bit ironic because we strip out food and energy from our inflation measures, or the Fed seems to. But th that does seem to be part of the calculus here. And I, I'm of the view we're in a super cycle. I'm of the view that there are structural reasons why energy prices stay higher. Therefore, I don't think you get relief anytime soon from that. Exactly. I am in that similar type of view that energy prices are going to go higher. Does that mean what that means is we'll have more year over year in CPI inflation? Does that mean the Fed's going to raise rates because of higher energy prices? No. But let's go back to yesterday when Jay Powell heard it about inflation. If higher gasoline prices, higher energy prices, say, push inflation back to 4 percent, they can't talk about easing next year yeah. in the face of 4 percent. So what higher energy prices do is they kill the potential for rate cuts next year. Maybe they don't add rate hikes this year or later in the, you know, in the winter. So why is there talk about, from Bostick today about a cut at the end of 2024, do you think? I, I think go in the face of what the Fed wants to telegraph. Right. I think that that's a mistake on their part because they're, they're operating under this assumption that 2 percent inflation is still attainable and coming. And I think the market is really starting to question that. The market is maybe more towards 3 or 4 percent inflation. Now, that doesn't sound like much, but it gets back to what is fair value on interest rates. And we might not be that far above fair value. I think what they'd be better off arguing is don't just say, well, we're very close to 2 percent. Explain to us why you think we're going to go back to that pre-COVID or pre-pandemic level of 2 percent inflation. Because I think a lot of people in the market are really starting to question whether that's going to happen. So, Jim, if... If they do settle at a higher inflationary, and they don't have to settle it, it just has to exist for all the reasons that Tim just mentioned. Maybe it's energy prices in the summer. But sooner or later, the economy will weaken, right? And if we do have this stagflationary environment, if we're looking at an S&P 500 at 4,200, trading at about you know 18 times, which is the 10-year average versus a period where interest rates were far lower throughout that sort of thing. Don't you think equities are a little mispriced? I know I'm leading the witness here a little bit, but it's <laughs> not a place that we've been in a very long time. And, and 
And so I just feel like the equity market has not really woken up to what a, a new reality might be. Well, it's waking up to it. I mean, the drawdown in the stock market now is the largest we've seen since we hit the bottom in October of last year. Uh, but I do think you're right. There is an alternative. The alternative, let's start with a 5.5% money market rate. Uh, University of Chicago has done long-term studies, says long-term the stock market will give you 9%. Have up years, <clears throat> down years, 9%. I give you two thirds of that with almost no risk. That is an option. So now we're going to have to see the stock market compete with it. And you mentioned it earlier in the show. Everything but the Magnificent Seven is essentially flat or down on the year. And everybody's looking at five and a half percent money market rates. And they think that's been the best call all year. That's what the stock market is going to have to contend with. Does that mean the stock market collapses? No. But it just means that that marginal dollar that's sitting in cash, this is not 2019, when it was sitting in cash at zero, it's sitting in cash at five and a half, will just sit there. And it's going to be harder to drag that money out. And that's what we're seeing in the returns in the market, except for seven big mega cap stocks.